uh, with Capital Sales. We're going to be starting in just uh, four minutes, right at nine o'clock. Uh, wanted to reach out to you guys and let you know um, if you guys have any questions. We do have a lot to cover today, so I just ask you guys to post them in the questions box, and we'll take as much time as needed after the webinar to answer all your guys' questions. Again, we're going to get started in three minutes, right at nine o'clock. So uh, if you need to go grab a cup of coffee, I'd grab it now. Uh, thanks, guys, and we'll get started here in a few. I want to thank everybody. Well, I want to thank everybody for taking time out of your day. Uh, my name is Chris Scanlon. I'm with Capital Sales, and we are actually joined today by Todd Towie. Todd, are you there? I am here. Thanks for asking. Well, and Todd is actually with Ring, so we've got an expert right here, uh, right from Ring. Todd, I'm going to let you uh, actually take over. Well, hey, thanks a lot. Appreciate the introduction. Hey team, uh, appreciate the time you're spending. Uh, it is a valuable time you are spending, so I want to make sure we uh, we make use of it. Uh, I absolutely believe that uh, you taking the time means a tremendous amount to me personally and to my organization. So I want to maximize the uh, effort that we're gonna we're gonna do with. Uh, what gives me the right to be on this call? Uh, first of all, my history: uh, 12 years spent at Panamax and Furman, uh, a little bit of time with Core Brands. Uh, left there to join Dana Innovations. Uh, I am absolutely passionate, and I joined Ring about uh, earlier this year. So Panamax Furman, Dana Innovations, and now Ring. And I, I like I said, I've got an incredible amount of passion for the Cedia channel, the uh, installers, the integrators around the country uh, that are making it happen. So uh, without further ado, kind of want to jump in. This is how you get a hold of me. Uh, you have questions. Uh, post this. Uh, you have uh, need anything. Uh, I'd like to say I'm the one neck to grab uh, that you could uh, rely on to get some answers and questions and some guidance of some of the solutions. So uh, that is my cell phone, the 415-717-3059 and Todd Towie at ring.com. Just a second here. It's not... Okay, cool. Hey, so Ring, uh, the mission, uh, why I joined the company, uh, it's a compelling message that I believe inside the walls of Ring uh, is something that is driven by every decision we make and what made J Jamie Simonoff, the inventor of Ring, uh, uh, so successful and so passionate about the message. It's reducing crimes in communities, right? If uh, you can reduce crime, uh, that is good for everybody, right? And so that is the mission of the company, is to reduce crime in communities. And the message to you, the integrator, is by helping us with our mission to reduce crime in neighborhoods, you can enhance your brand in not only in the house that you're in and the end user customer, but in your community. Uh, my belief truly is that you've worked hard to build your brand in your community and that the ring experience can help foster better relationships in your community. Uh, and by this, I segue into how many of us do advertise, and the hands would go up would be very, very limited across the country who are on this call. Uh, this is a way to get great advertising in your community uh, with the Ring experience, and we'll get into that in a little bit. Um, how we back you up. I think it's important that uh, a lifetime purchase protection. So if you install Ring and it gets stolen or gets damaged, uh, we're going to send it to you and send it to your customer for free. So we're going to back up the install. So when you install it, you can have a backbone about, hey, this is a company that's going to back you up and be there for you should something go wrong. Uh, we're going to leave the customer hanging. And I think that's important for you to understand when you're installing Ring uh, that, hey, we have your back. And uh, if the product were to get stolen, uh, we'll replace the product for free. How we can help you then with your ring uh, installations and how we could help your standing in your community. Ring neighborhoods. So it's a big deal for us. And it's a big deal of how you get more tightly integrated into your community and you get the personal advertising. And I'll give you an example. But the Ring Neighborhoods app is what separates us from some of the other organizations who are doing video doorbells and security cameras. So between one, two, or three mile radius from the customer's home, if they see someone, a perpetrator on their property or someone stealing a bike, which is the example I use, 
they can roll that video of capturing that perpetrator into our neighborhoods app. And then with that, if you opt in uh, to the neighborhoods portion, you'll get notified. Uh, for example, uh, you would see notification, hey, watch out for a person stealing bikes two miles away on Center Road or their suspicious activity. And my own, uh, and my own example is um, my wife having uh, coffee at Starbucks with six other women. So there are seven women at a round table in Starbucks. Of the seven, three had a ring notification go off on their phone. They opened up the app and it said just that, be careful of someone stealing bikes on Center Road, right? So then four of those seven women said, hey, what's that? Oh, that's Ring. My wife is Kathy. Hey, Kathy's husband, Todd, works for the company. But yeah, let me show you. And uh, team, what I say here is Ring doesn't, people don't talk about Ring flat-footed. They get up on the balls of their feet. They're excited about it, right? And it's a huge, it's a huge win for us as far as our neighborhood and in tying into law enforcement. Um, when the chief of police comes up to me at my kid's football game and says, hey, you work for Ring? And I say, yeah, I'm a national account manager. He says, your product has helped me capture three criminals just this week alone. That's a pretty compelling message. And here's what I ask when I'm in an airport or um, when I'm asked, when people say, hey, do you work for the company? They, and they, they, oh, let me show you this. Person was looking in my window. We were able to capture him. I ask, hey, who installed it? And their answer, nine out of ten times is, oh, my guy, my AV guy. You know, I've got this guy. Right, and that's you. That's you. That's how you tie into the community, right? So let's go over some of the solutions, right? So we're going to have your back. We're going to create a good experience for the end user. And we're going to have you succeed inside the home, and ultimately, we're going to drive business to you. Uh, we have spent millions of dollars on advertising uh, to get our name brand out, so people are aware of Ring, and more and more integrators that I see across the country because I do national accounts. So I'm all around the country. More and more people tell me that their customer has asked for it, right? So that's, that's pretty compelling to start. All right, so let's just go over the product. I'm going to be real quick about the products, but I just want to show you what's around. So the Ring Video Doorbell 2, 1080p on the high def on the video, two-way audio. There's a live view so you can see what's going on. Adjustable motion zones. And by that, I mean on the adjustable. I'm a big baseball fan. Think of it this way from the infield dirt to the outfield fence, and anywhere in between, I can maneuver at the adjustable motion zone. So I don't get a car going by. I don't care if someone's walking by on the sidewalk, but if they come up on my driveway, I want to know about it. So you're able to adjustable uh, adjust the motion zones. Night vision. When that chief of police came up to me, it was on the night vision side that he was impressed. Weather resistant. All around the country, whether you're in a desert of Arizona, or Southern California, or in the cold weather of Wisconsin and Minnesota, uh, we've done a lot to improve the weather resistant piece of it. On the Wi-Fi side, it does 2.4 gigahertz on the Wi-Fi connection, because we need great Wi-Fi, and I'll get into that as well. Let's cover the Pro real quickly. Same thing applies, the 1080p, the great video, the two-way audio, the live view. How about customizable motion zones? So not just the infield dirt to the outfield fence and anywhere in between, but I can eliminate left field and focus more deeply on right field uh, or uh, part of my driveway that I think is, is, is more successful to people coming up that way. Gives me a better uh, 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 customizable motion zones. The same night vision, the same weather resistance. Uh, but here's something I want everyone to be aware of. As 5 gigahertz, as more and more communities start accepting 5 gig and start making initiatives to move from 2.4 to 5 gig, we support that with our pro model. So we do the 2.4 and the 5 gigahertz. The uh, Ring Video Doorbell 2 was from 8 to 24 volts. The pro is from 16 to 24 volts is the power requirement. Then we have the Elite. Uh, this is something that was driven of people who were now uh, looking to complement the design of homes and not compete, and they wanted a different way to power it, and they wanted a power over Ethernet option. But it's same thing, right? 1080p, the two-way audio, the customizable, same thing as the Pro, but the power option is the power over Ethernet, and it sits flush into the wall, so you'll need 
Uh, it's a little bit harder of an install, but we're seeing it in new construction and remodeled jobs uh, where we're seeing it really successful, and we're seeing more and more of our elite doorbells sold in those scenarios. Kind of want to go over the difference as I spoke quickly about it, um, but because the video doorbell 2 uses IR, that has the adjustable motion zones uh, that you have to be able to detect approaching people. Um, but because the doorbell pro, the video doorbell pro is hardwired, it uses a computer overlaid image to detect the differences. And so that would gives you the uh, uh, improvement from adjustable to now customizable motion zones. And again, that five gigahertz on the signal. Then I want to talk about what's really coming up in our channel and selling more and more as guys are doing this. And this is the way I approach the floodlight cam, right? So people have doing their bread and butter, whether it's uh, you know, distributed audio uh, and maybe a, a, a remote control. So they, they do that. They install that. While they're in the house, they ask, hey, I see you don't have a video doorbell. People have heard of Ring. Hey, yeah. So they get that job of installing the, either, you know, one of the doorbells. From there, a week or two later, they go back and check on their bread and butter, the remote, the, the architectural speakers, how, that, how that's going. And then while they're there, they see an old floodlight. And when they ask, hey, how do you like your ring? Again, people don't talk about ring flat-footed. They're up on their balls of their feet. They're, more, they're excited about the experience. Uh, that's what's made us uh, you know, such a compelling company uh, these past couple years is the experience people are having with it. Then, then integrators are turning to the end user and saying, hey, I see you have an old flight. Do you want to have that as a ring camera too, the ability to talk about it? And then 110 decibel alarm. And so they're winning that job as well, replacing an old floodlight. And that's why we see the floodlight cam so successful. All the same great stuff, right? The 1080p, the two-way audio, live view, has the 110 decibel alarm. It's 100 to 240 volt compatible. Comes in black and white. So keep that in mind. Then I want to cover just quickly the spotlight, the three different versions of our spotlight cams. As these are being won in, you know, above the garage, if not replacing a floodlight, but on the side and backyards uh, where integrators are having real success uh, with these cameras. So the wired version, I'll let you guys read the screen, uh, but the deal is it plugs into an outlet. It's got a 20 foot uh, cord that it plugs into, has the 110 decibel alarm like all of them. Then I move to the spotlight battery, comes with one battery. That battery lasts about 750 hours, and we need to be charged two to three times a year, depending on traffic. Just the mailman going by, plenty of life in it, probably twice a year. But with a lot of activity, a lot of traffic, you probably charge it two to three times a year. There's an additional slot for an additional battery. Uh, that's an option. But I'm always trying to get integrators to do the solar option on a battery install. That way it's one and done. The solar panel would be able to charge, comes in white and black and would be able to match that of the camera. Uh, so that way you would never have to charge, you never have to replace the battery. Um, it would always be charged by the solar panel. The end user would never have to get up on a ladder. You never have to have a service call for that regard. So the wired has a 20 foot power cord we plug right into an outlet. The battery option is a wireless option uh, and then has two slots for the battery, comes with one, and then the solar panel. What I'm really trying to get integrators around the country to look at is our spotlight cam mount. I talked about enhancing your brand. This is an option where, unlike the other two, the wired and the battery, the spotlight cam mount has a third wire, and I'm going to show you in just a second, but that would allow you to trigger the motion on the cam, on the spot, uh, spotlight cam mount, and then it could trigger other auxiliary lights on the wall. So it's a better install than your average DIY. And what I'm trying to reinforce in today's call as I talk to integrators around the country is that you're trying to do a DIFM. It's a do-it-for-me model. Uh, our pricing and our, uh, the way we are, we try and get it to be a price point that you're just about with your install price and then the product where someone's like, you know what, for that price, yeah, can you do it for me? And I think that's something that's good. It's 110 to 120 volts as well. And here's sort of the spotlight cam mount uh, continued. I think it's important, again, that we just talk about these are this version is something that I see in this channel, 
and more and more integrators want to do an install that separates them from the DIY. You have two neighbors, one did one of the battery or the, uh, the wired version, great. But if you did the mountain version and you tied into another auxiliary light where it would trigger other lights, uh, that's something that, hey, man, mine doesn't do that. You know, that's got the, the neighbor thinking who did it themselves. Wow, my, my camera doesn't, my, my ring camera doesn't do that. Hey, who, who did this for you? And then, bam, your name comes up for stuff like that. So that's just, it's got all the, uh, the mounting screws and washers, the four-inch round and two-by-four, the weatherproof electrical box. That's not included. Uh, but you see the black and hot wire, the white and the neutral wire, and that red wire is from controlling up to 150 watts of auxiliary light. And remember, hey, just cap it if you're not using it, as you see in this image right here. But that's something that I want you guys to look and think about as you do your next spotlight cam, maybe transitioning to the mount version. And sure enough, as an organization, we're seeing a lot more of these sold in our channel. Not so much in retail, right? Not many people in retail are, are going to this, uh, this version, um, but a lot of people in our professional channel uh, is happening as well. All right, so again, I talked about integrating and making installs better. Right, and making your brand inside that home more powerful. How about Ring with Alexa? I'm, I would, I can't see you guys, but I bet if I ask how many of your customers are Alexa customers and have Alexa's show um, uh, or the uh, the Echo Spot or a Fire TV, a lot of hands would go up. So we work uh, with that. So Alexa, you know, works with the Ring Video Doorbell too. The Pro, the Elite, the Floodlight Cam, and the Spotlight Cam wired in battery, allowing you, you know, for, hey, Alexa, show me the front door, show me the backyard, and all that stuff is shown. So, uh, and look for us as an organization to really improve our Alexa integration. Uh, so as your customer uh, grows with Alexa in the house, that our effort with Alexa will be much more compelling. Again, tied into it. And when people are over at your customer's house, and they see this type of stuff, hey, that's awesome. Who did this for you? And then your name gets dropped. Take a second here to talk about the Ring Chime and the Chime Pro. Uh, these are, the Chime is just a, a chime. So essentially, you ring the video doorbell too without any hard wire, and then you have a chime. So that would uh, be the doorbell inside the house. That way you know a visitor is coming. The Chime Pro. Now, I take a second here to say, look, it has its place, and we sell a lot of it. If your router is more than 30 feet away from the Ring device, you can use a Wi-Fi extender. It boosts the signal to help our Ring devices to make sure that uh, uh, that eliminates dead zones, and then therefore your latency is limited, right? But here's where I just take a step back. I want you to sell this if it's the right solution. Hey, but I'd also ask you to look at some of the Wi-Fi solutions you're offering, other brands that have... Um, you know, uh, Wi-Fi repeaters or uh, wireless access points. So if your customer's in the basement or in their backyard on an iPad, uh, that's flying as well. I'm all about enhancing your brand for all of them. In my household, believe it or not, I can't stand it, but my kids play um, uh, uh, Fortnite. But when they're on Fortnite and they say, hey, you know what, Dad, since we've improved our Wi-Fi, hey, we haven't had any lagging, right? And so that's something I think can really help you, not so much on the Fortnite piece, but you know where I'm going with that. All right, so here's what I want to dive into next as well, and I think it's, it's uh, an important step uh, for Ring. Uh, so we talked about the doorbells. We talked about the floodlights, the security cameras, the spotlight cameras. Uh, we talked about the um, Chime and the Chime Pro. Uh, but this is really where it's about uh, the Ring alarm, and it's new to us, and it's uh, being pretty well-received in our uh, professional channel as a solution. So I want to cover that uh, so you guys can understand rings, uh, the entire ring of security that we're offering as a whole home security, all in the same app that's made ring so successful. You get now the ability to have the ring alarm uh, uh, tied into the same app. And I'll go over what, what's in the pieces. All right, so for the home security kit, one of each comes included. So let's start from left to right. The base station could be hardwired or on the Wi-Fi. So there's two ways, uh, Wi-Fi or directly hardwired into it. We're seeing this 
uh, many places in the home, but from the integrators I'm talking to, uh, we're seeing that generally by the router, by the rack of equipment, right? That's where all your alerts would be. So if someone were to open the door, your alarm would be set off. This is where the sound would come from. Then you have the other devices, which are Z-Wave Plus devices, and you could have multiple in a home. The base station is one per property. The keypad charged micro USB and um, again is Z-Wave, so it doesn't uh, add more to the Wi-Fi network. Then you have motion detection, motion detectors, contact sensors, so windows and doors comes with one, but again, you could add multiple. I was out in the Hamptons in New York a few weeks back, and I saw someone that had up to 18 sensors in their house with no issue because it's Z-Wave and sometimes the range extender. So you need a Z-Wave, potentially a Z-Wave uh, range extender if you're more than 250 feet away. So that's why a range extender is included in the kit itself. So that's what comes included in the actual kit. So the wall is powered, uh, plugs into an outlet, be connected again, Wi-Fi. The LED shows the status. You can mount the keypad on a wall or in our, excuse me, in our house. Uh, we have it as you walk into our, ki into our kitchen from the garage. It's right in our pantry. So it's easily uh, accessible. You can uh, set the alarm via your app or the keypad. The keypad and the, uh, um, the motion detector and the uh, door and window sensors, they have built-in batteries that should last about three years. There's in the base station itself, there's a 24-hour battery backup in it. So if the power gets lost, uh, it'll work for 24 hours. So there's three modes uh, of the alarm. There's the disarm, home, and away. And this is typical what I've seen, and this is the way it works in my household. But away is typically associated with perimeter and interior sensors so that the home, a uh, whole home is armed. Home is typically associated with the perimeter sensors only. This allows neighbors to walk through their home while the system monitors uh, exterior doors and windows. This is the one that my wife uses when the kids and me are away. She's upstairs but wants to know if someone has opened a door or window, right? So those are the, uh, that's the what we're talking about. And in a way, it's when the whole system is set. Kind of want to make sure Z-Wave, that you understand Z-Wave. And I know on a lot of people on this call do, but I just want to make sure you understand that why we chose it. Um, first of all, it allows us to grow our partners. Uh, this is our first offering of the alarm, so we wanted we chose Z-Wave Plus uh, because that's the standard that allows us really then to tie in with other um, other security products throughout the home uh, and then allow us to grow again our partnerships. Um, you can add new devices using QR codes. The wireless uh, it doesn't interfere with the Wi-Fi, and we understand that uh, we don't want to bog the Wi-Fi down, so that's why we chose Z-Wave Plus. Has a longer battery life. And again, allows the network devices to talk to one another. And then of course with the Z-Wave, the mesh network functionality, uh, that's something we see uh, why a lot of other organizations have chosen Z-Wave as their, uh, as their um, uh, technology. Again, it becomes a signal repeater uh, more throughout the home. And then uh, with the all alarm products, use a secure, mesh technology, right, so they could talk to one another, protect the neighbor's home, uh, and that's why we think Ring Alarm is perfect for our channel. Kind of just go over the benefits of Ring Alarm, right? The home security, it's made affordable and simple. There are no long-term contracts, um, and I'll be quite frank here when I say that. Um, when a lot of people who are alarm installers uh, show some disgruntlement uh, with the Ring Alarm, I ask them, out of 10 jobs, how many are you um, getting? And don't tell me all 10. You're getting six, but because you're in front of me or on this call, I would say seven. You're walking away from three jobs in which you're not getting anything. This is an opportunity to not walk away from jobs and we're able to get something. It's the all-in-one app experience, 
right? Our Ring app has been, uh, a lot of people approach me and tell me what makes it so successful is our app and the way, uh, the intuitiveness of it and how people like going to it and doing the live view, right? So this all uh, connects to the doorbells um, and is uh, that's why it's an all-in-one app experience. There's a $10 a month uh, professional monitoring fee. There's two modes. There's a personal monitoring uh, where it's just, you know, where you self-monitor it. There's no um, professional monitoring service or no central station. Then you have an opportunity to sign up for that for $10 a month or $100 uh, for the whole year. Where integrators that sell alarms are losing is because people don't want to sign up for a long-term contract of $30 or $50 a month. 70% of all broadband customers in the U.S. don't have some form of alarm. It's over 140 million homes in America, right? So the attach rate to apartments, condominiums, and the elderly, the senior citizens, is less than 7%. Our solution, we believe, offers you an opportunity to now hit that market, where today I don't believe the success is at a great ratio. We can improve that. And then no moving fees should they move from one condo to another. Here's some of the protection plans that we want to cover, right? So if you sell a ring doorbell, uh, a single device is $30 a year or $3 a month. That captures our, we capture that recording in our cloud storage. So it allows for 60 day recordings that you can review and download and you can share and post. So that share and post is the neighbors, and then the review and download, uh, that would allow you to, to look. If you saw a perpetrator on your property and you wanted to bring that to the police to help capture that person, uh, you can do that. Again, that's $3 a month or $30 a year. Then I turn my attention to the Ring Protection Plus. Again, it's per home. So they have a home in uh, uh Geneva, uh, you know in uh, in Wisconsin and the lake in Wisconsin this would only be one per home it wouldn't be able to capture both of the customers properties so again video restoring for 60 days if you have four up to unlimited amount of cameras on the property you would want to go to the uh the protect plus option uh because that would be savings if you had three devices you would just do $30 a, uh, each device a year, that would be $90. So at the fourth device, it would make sense to turn your attention to the Protect Plus plan, and the same stuff applies. Capture the video recording for 60 days. Here is some excitement I would want to share on this call. Um, it is on our company's roadmap, and in the future, sometime in 2019, um, uh, you'll see that we'll offer the ability to record and do an NVR, a DVR capability. So a lot of uh, integrators are like, hey, I wish that you guys did something like that. Uh, we've listened to you, and uh, it is on the company roadmap to be able to do that. Uh, so look for that, uh, that exciting uh, piece to come sometime in the new year. Here's the professional monitoring service. The cell backup uh, is lost. That's an option if you were then to sign up for the uh, Protect Plus plan. We not only have the 24-hour battery backup, but then you'll have the cell backup service should power be lost in that regard. Now, this is where um, it differs per each municipality whether you need a permit and a license to install this. And because I'm on a national call, I would articulate that Ring's position is that you would need a, a alarm license to install it. If they're going to do the professional monitoring, if they're going to do just the personal monitoring, then there would be no license. And what Ring has done is we allow each municipality and where it's installed to identify whether you need a permit to notify the local police if you need, if you have the professional monitoring. So you set up a professional monitoring and you set up a password, someone comes into your house and they call you and you know the, the code. Um, you know, I'm looking at my MacBook, so let's say it's, oh, the code MacBook, yep, it's all good, no need to send the police, but if they don't get a hold of you or you give the wrong code, then they would notify the police and they would send the police. Now, for that to happen, depending on the municipality, you need to notify the police that you have that and a permit is required. 
Therefore, my stance is on this call is that you would need an alarm license should your customer do that. All right, so I also want to talk about, so that's the alarm. It has been well received and people are saying, you know what, it has its place. Not for everybody, not for every install, but certainly it has its place as you look to secure a ring of security around your customer's property. This is the next piece that's coming. So it's gonna start shipping. Capital will have it um, sometime in the week of October 20th. And uh, we are excited that Capital is uh, stepping up and ordering it. So you'll see it's the stick up cam, elite and battery. It's an indoor outdoor. So this is now uh, something that we see where we may have had a shortcoming on, as a product um, portfolio is an indoor piece. Yes, it does outdoor as well. We could talk about that. But my personal preference is that it's an indoor. Again, we talk about the three rings of security inside the home, right? So that's the alarm, the affordable solution for whole home security. Two, around the home, and that's the doorbell, the floodlight, the spotlight cams, and in your community, and that's then with the neighborhood portion of the app. And so now with that then is the stick-up cam. So anywhere you want to mount it, outdoors or indoor, it's our revamped stick-up cam, and it brings smart security inside the home. There's multiple power options. The first one will be um, the Elite, the wire, the ring stick-up cam wired version. That'll be the first one. Um, that'll be the release date. We slipped a little, and I should have taken that out, to be honest with you, and I apologize. Uh, but that is the uh, ship date. It was supposed to be the 30th, but now it's going to be in the uh, mid-October. So I'm saying by the week of October 20th. This is the wired version. And again, this is where we took guidance from integrators. We took guidance when they said, hey, what are we missing? And they said an indoor camera that's powered via USB or Ethernet. So I need more POE options for cameras inside homes. So as you've seen Ring or you've approached Ring at trade shows or in events, and you said, hey, I need more Ethernet, uh, we listened. And uh, I could speak uh, from my channel, and uh, my manager, Rudy Trujillo, absolutely believes that we can listen to you guys and we can make better products uh, by listening to what you guys have said and what you guys have recommended. Uh, and so we absolutely listen, uh, and that's uh, I commend Rudy on that, and we're making great strides, and this is a great stride here. So an indoor-outdoor camera powered by Ethernet or USB, that same 1080p high-definition video with the two-way talk, Ethernet or Wi-Fi connected, integrated with Ring Alarm. So you're now able to see the cameras inside with the ring alarm, motion detection, night vision. How about works with Alexa already? Flexible mounting options, right? So you can use it as a freestanding or a bra uh, mounted bracket. It allows you to uh, mount from any angle. Again, this is stuff that we took right from you guys. And with a suggest retail of $179, uh, we think we have a price point that allow your customers to say, you know what? I do want an indoor camera, and I want one here. And then that price point, and with you guys doing it, uh, we think we've got something successful there. So the first stick-up cam will be the wired version, and that's coming mid-October. In November, you'll see the battery version of our stick-up cam. And then that, uh, that'll be something that you'll be able to see. It'll have the same battery that is in our spotlight cam battery, that's in our Ring Video 2 battery. So it's the same format there. So you'll be familiar with it. With that then, uh, again, all this great same stuff, right? The 1080p, the two-way talk, the rechargeable battery pack. So that'll be something. Again, integrated with the alarm, basic motion detection, night vision will work with Alexa, all that same stuff. But this will come mid-November. Right, so the first one will be the wired, and then the battery uh, will come mid-November, uh, just in time for the holidays. But those are two new options. So now we have the indoor camera. We've got the alarm set with it. Uh, that's for the inside, right, for the alarm. We've got all the front door, the doorbells that come. We've got the spotlight cam, the floodlight cam. So you absolutely can have a ring of security around your customer's property 
all within the same app. And uh, that's what we see really compelling. Hey, we have a community support um, that's dedicated to integrators. And I can't stress that enough. Um, as I've called this number a few times, just randomly to see, uh, and I haven't been on hold long, right? I, I've gotten right in because we understand the power of the integration, the professional channel. So with that, this is the number you can call. You can certainly call me, email, text me. Uh, I gave you the number before, but the cell number, 415, right? 717-3059. If you're on you know, the West Coast, but I travel quite a bit. If I'm in something like this and I can't get to you, I would really try this number, the 855-746-4664, right, or help, dot, help at ring.com. Uh, we have a team dedicated to helping uh, this channel, and uh, we at Ring more than ever uh, believe this channel is a way to help us grow uh, not just the rest of this year but into 2019 and 20. As we build a three-year plan, uh, the Rudy looks at how we're going to uh, present to our management about the growth. Uh, a lot of it's on you guys. And we believe that we have had products in the portfolio uh, that can support you in that regard. So now with that, I absolutely appreciate the time you spent. Uh, like I said, uh, I'm passionate about this channel. I'm passionate about helping you enhance your brand, not only in the customer's home, uh, but in your neighborhood. Uh, I absolutely, and I say that a lot, believe that you guys spend an incredible amount of time and energy enhancing and, and creating and building your brand. Uh, we want to help you. So with that, how about questions uh, that you guys might have? Yeah, thanks, Todd. Uh, I'll hop on through the questions here. Uh, the first question we have is uh, floodlights. Are those LED or are those standard bulbs? The LED. And there are 3,000 lumens. And then uh, the next question is, what is the recommended minimum internet upload and download speed for one's uh, internet provider? You know what? That's a great question. Whoever asked that, um, my apologies. I should have covered that. We care about upload speed. Uh, a lot of people say, oh, my download speed is great. I need great Wi-Fi. So the upload, the minimum is two megabit of upload speed to create an experience uh, that is what we call the ring experience and is a very good one where you don't get sort of the spinning wheel. Uh, it gets no latency and uh, someone's walking up, the motion detection sets the motion in, I get the notification and can jump on the app. I need a minimum of two megabits of upload speed. And that's where I'd uh, take just a second again, um, try and sell you know, wireless access points, own the network. If I could give you one bit of guidance uh, where this industry has changed, it's all about network. You got to own the network inside the house and uh, understand and provide a message that the ring is a great experience, but it does need a great Wi-Fi experience as well and the megabits. And that hopefully will give you some additional revenue uh, to enhance your brand inside the home. Great question. Two megabits. Yeah. And I will, uh, and I'll expand on that. Where if you guys are uh, hesitant or afraid to get into uh, owning the network. Uh, I'm here at Capital, uh, your account manager at Capital. We're all very network savvy and we'll be able to help you design the proper network for that job if that's what you need. So we're here for that as well. Um, the next question is, is uh, wireless contacts use Z-Wave frequency. Uh, can you ex uh, expand on that? Um, let's see. So in our alarm, we do the Z-Wave Plus, but our ring devices use the Wi-Fi network if I understood that question correctly. But in our ring alarm, the sensors and the motion and the keypad, that uses the Z-Wave Plus technology. And then the base uses Wi-Fi or as a direct hardwired connection via the ethernet. Perfect. And then uh, the next one is, uh, does ring work with the alarm.com app? Um, it does not, and um, you know what? I uh, I have absolute uh, respect for what Alarm.com has done and what they've provided. Uh, we do not currently work with them, uh, but who knows? That's something that could change. And uh, you know, I, I, as as we grow, um, I think that's something that uh, is not out of the question. I would love to see that. Uh, because, again, uh, I understand that uh, an integrator wants to hand over a solution to the uh, end user and not have a bunch of different apps 
you know, Ring, Lutron, Sonos, Nest, et cetera, uh, they want one. And that's where uh, Alarm.com has done a great job. But the answer today is no, we don't. Uh, but I would certainly love to see that change. Great. And then the next one, uh, does the Ring stick up support audio? It does. Yep. Two-way audio. So you're able to communicate via that way as well. Great question, guys. Uh, it tells me uh, that's what capital has been known, uh, the history that I've known it, to attract just great integrators and support. Uh, Chris's question about the networking or the guidance that, that capital can give, uh, that's exactly uh, the questions, all that stuff is exactly uh, matches uh, the description of a, a great uh, dealer and integrator. Well, the next question is, uh if you have time, can you go back over and just uh, further explain the permitting licensing required for monitor service? Obviously, there is a lot of integrators that haven't got into security, and this is a great way too, um, but they're really hesitant on you know that licensing, that permitting behind it. Uh, can you yeah. further go into that again? You bet. So there are two ways uh, to monitor the alarm. The first one is uh, just a personal monitoring where there is no central station that where police would be called. You personally, the end user personally monitors that. If you install Ring and have the personal monitoring, you do not need a license. But in certain municipalities, the licensing is tied to the integrators. So if a police were to come out on a false alarm. It's not the end user that gets penalized, it's the integrator. So Ring's stance is that if the end user signs up for the professional monitoring, we do need the permit to be, uh, to be do you need to get the permit? Now on our ring.com site, where you sign up for it, we can help the end user maneuver and get the steps necessary to get the permit, right? But because we need, uh, it's a little gray area, I cannot deny that, but because there's two ways, the, the personal monitoring, you could, you could install it and have no issue because there would never be a police, never a false alarm, et cetera. But due to the fact that we're on a national call and each municipality is different, we need to say legally that a ring professional monitoring, you would need an alarm license. But now what I'm seeing, and, and I, um, I want to be clear about this, is that when it's the end user that makes the decision to sign up for that, the professional monitoring, that what a lot of guys are doing to um, on their quote and when they bid it and when they have the customer sign off, that they're releasing liability should you sign up for the ring professional monitor. But the stance that ring has to have across the country is that um, because it, you know, in a call like this in particular, now if I'm just in one region, I could, I could say, hey, you don't need it. But because on a national call, and there are people from all over the country on this call potentially, uh, the ring stance is that if your customer is going to sign up for the professional monitoring, that you would need a ring alarm license for that. Now, as an organization, we are looking and taking steps to make sure that we're doing all the stuff legally um, and we're delivering the right message. Um, but today, that is the message. And if you want to, um, you know, get me offline to talk more about that, um, to see how other integrators are doing it around the country. Uh, that is, that is certainly I'm, I'm available, but my last message is that it's the end user that can help, you know, that does the sign up for it. And then we would help the end user get the permit. So that way the police would know that, that your end user customer has the ring personal, the uh, protect plus plan. A long, a long-winded answer, I know, um, but you have to keep in mind. Uh, but that's the the legal, the legalese I have to dance, and I apologize. And then uh, the next question is: is uh, 
what third-party control systems do you guys integrate with? Uh, RTI, Pro Control, URC. Do you guys yep. have any? Uh, so we are. All right, so our API has been available. Um, and look, this is maybe one uh, of our shortcomings uh, as we, have, you know, entered into this market, the pro market, is that we probably didn't go after the accounts of automation as well as we should have. I'd mentioned Alarm.com. Now, URC, for example, we are not natively integrated into it. It's another app into their solution, but it does work. Control 4, there's a driver written for it, um, but now they probably wouldn't sign on Ring as a doorbell because they have their own. Um, but Savant, look for Savant, for example, to be natively integrated, Ring to be natively integrated into their solution. They've made a commitment uh, to us as an organization that that's something that, that uh, they'd like to see and will do that would natively integrate into it but we it's available but we um, as an organization probably haven't gone after the uh, the automation companies as hard as we should have um, and that's maybe why we don't integrate it uh, that is a criticism um, but I'm gentle about it our API has been available uh, for people to do to natively integrate it um, but we didn't go after them uh, as an organization but so Savant will be natively integrated. There's a driver for Control 4 that does notifications and other organizations as we uh, approach. There's a company, uh, Brilliant, for example. Uh, they natively integrate. Uh, so we're seeing maybe more and more people gravitate. Um, but in some cases, there's a potential to cannibalize some of their existing doorbell sales, and that may, uh, may prohibit us uh, from natively integrating. Mm, again, a long-winded answer, uh, but that's where we're at today. Great. Um, and the next question, uh, is the $10 fee cover both the cloud storage of video and the monitoring service? It does. Again, dialed-in question. I uh, really appreciate that. It does. So you get the professional monitoring as well as uh, full or unlimited amount of cameras uh, that would give you the 60-day recordings. Great question. Let's see here. And then any chance of integrating the alarm into our existing central monitoring station or allowing us revenue sharing uh, if using Ring's CMS? You know, I, uh, I appreciate uh, uh, the opinion and the question. Uh, unfortunately, not today. Um, the answer today is no, we don't. Um, offer the ability to get reoccurring revenue for the integrated. Not to say that that's uh, you know not going to happen, or not to or to say it's going to happen. Uh, but today the answer is no. Uh, we don't offer that ability. Um, but uh, you know who knows? More and more people say they'd like that uh, down the road. Uh, that's a discussion we could bring uh, to our management and uh, and hopefully make some changes. Uh, we've seen movement in other areas, i.e. recording into an NVR, DVR. Uh, that is something that we see, uh, so maybe the potentially down the road, um, but not in the near future. Um, I don't see that happening, um, but uh, like I said, maybe uh, down the road. But today the answer is no. Sorry. <laughs> Um, and then the next question is, uh, I assume the monitoring service allows us for a test mode. Is there any options for uh, test or demo features on that monitoring service? Not that I'm aware of. That's a, I apologize for this, but I don't believe so. And I'm, but I'd be ahead of my skis. I don't, I don't believe so, but I'm not hundred percent sure on that, but I don't believe so. I apologize for that. And then uh, is uh, Ring planning on uh, integrating or uh, supporting HomeKit or the Ring Pro or the floodlight cam or anything like that? You know what, that's something that uh, uh, inside the walls of, uh, of Ring, there is some frustration that that's not already in place. Uh, we have uh, uh, an arm of our organization that is working on that. I don't know the status of that and, and it's, you know, when it's going to happen, um, but I know people of uh, inside the walls of Ring, uh, there is people looking uh, and reviewing that 
and would like to see us work with home key. So again, I keep saying this, the answer today is no, but uh, that could be something that, uh, that we announce in the near future. And certainly with our uh, Amazon relationship, uh, that may be something that'll hasten that, uh, that piece of the two organizations uh, may be able to link a little more tighter. Apple and, Apple, and Amazon. Yeah. The standard ring uh, for the 199, is that battery powered? Uh, let's see. For the Ring Video Doorbell 2, it has two options. You can hardwire it to an 8 to 24 volt existing mechanical or electrical doorbell or battery powered. And then uh, does the cellular work uh, with uh, self-monitoring options? It does not. That is not. Only the 24-hour battery backup does. But the cell backup option is only good with the um, uh, with the Protect Plus. Uh, and then, uh, when you're talking about uh, you know being able to tie into an MVR, use an MVR in the future, could this be seen as designed to assist those customers uh, with a poor internet uh, upstream? That is something. Yes. Uh, again, that's something we are working on. Um, and that could be the answer there, um, but uh, that would be I would be conjecturing there. I think that would be very helpful in that regard. Um, so yeah, that is something I would say yes. Uh, but I'd be again a little ahead of my skis uh, to commit to saying yes entirely for that. All right, and then uh, here here here's an interesting or a hard one to answer, but I'm going to see how you do it. Uh, for the two two megapixel or two megabyte, I'm sorry, uh, upload speeds that you were asking for, is that per camera or is that the entire network? Uh, per Let's... camera. Okay. Uh, let's see here. And the next question: uh, If Ring wants to use my security permit or licensing, why doesn't they? Why don't they provide you with some RMR? I think you uh, answered that one a bit already. Yeah, no, I feel you. And uh, look, as um, I go across the country, I don't pull any punches. Um, there are integrators out there that are frustrated uh, with the solution. And our gray area uh, certainly adds a little bit of uh, additional um, angst. Um, but again, uh, you know, it's not for every solution, um, but uh, it is a solution that is out there um, and right for some. But I, then, uh, I I hear you. Here's a, here's a great one, um, and this kind of this may actually go into some of the Z-Wave options and or you know you guys offer uh, motion ca or security cams, uh, security lights. Uh, when the trigger goes off, uh, can it trigger turn the lights on, um, or from alarm motion devices trigger the lights? What are your options uh, inside of Ring? Okay, so not yet. I mean, with our indoor first, uh, the first offering to work with the alarm would be our stick-up camps. But I am very truthful. I'm an open book. There is frustration inside the walls that our cameras don't work with uh, the alarm. So someone sets the motion detection off, um, and, and you get a chance to see that. That is something we are working on, and you'll see uh, in our next revision that our cameras – doorbells and cameras will work with the excuse me will work with the alarm right now the first is the stick up cam um, but coming soon is the ability there and we as an organization are you know foot to the metal uh to the pedal to the metal to get that to work um because again there are people in our uh, organization uh and i'm one of them uh that would uh, that shows a little frustration that our cameras uh don't work and our doorbells don't integrate with our alarm but that is something we are definitely working on. And great question to your What's that? I said it can't be too critical of the company uh, for that. But, yeah, that is something that uh, I know uh, many people <laughs> are working on. Definitely many people in our company are working on. Definitely. Uh, and, and, guys, this, these are some great questions. And here's another one here. In the uh, Ring neighborhood, uh, is – video automatically share between the neighborhood members or does the homeowner have to approve it uh the upload to get shown yeah you have to approve it um and that's you'd uh, be you'd opt into the neighborhoods you uh verify the distance 
of you know what you thought would be appropriate but yeah you have to opt into that and then you can share and once you opt in and share um, other people who have opt in and shared can view the content that you've uploaded so after so let, let's just uh, I want to want to clarify there here um, once you have joined the neighborhood uh, if you you have the ability let's say somebody did steal a bike uh, you have the ability to just send a push notification out or uh, do you have to share the video as well? Um, you can push notification as well, but you have the option of sharing the video too. And we've seen okay. more and more people share the video because they want to show the perpetrator. Perfect. Okay, and then the next question is, who would we call to see if in our area we would need a license for the monitored service as an installer. Do you have so you'd be able to go to yep, ring.com. Uh, it's not a specific number, but ring.com. And then on the alarm side, you'd be able to go there and then enter into the zip code. <laughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> and that'll tell you uh, whether your municipality uh, requires the permit. Perfect. And then uh, on the... Uh, the IR on the cameras, is it consistently on at nighttime or how is that triggered? Is there day night mode? Uh, on that night that... is triggered by motion, uh, motion detection only. And then uh, for the doorbells, motion and, video and uh, pressing of the doorbell. So it doesn't record in a 20, it doesn't record 24 seven, only when the motion sets it off or in the doorbell piece when someone not only does the motion, but, but rings the doorbell. Okay, and then uh, what are you guys, uh, what's your recommendation when, or how do you guys handle uh, installs that have less than a two meg, uh, megabit per second upload speed? Um, let's say, you know, some people, unfortunately, there's a lot of people that still have DSL that have, let's say, a 0 0.7 megabit per second upload speed. Can the issue there, there is, yeah, the issue there is it's, it's a tough one uh, because then it, they may, what happens is, you know, the UPS driver, as an example, um, they come, they set the motion off, they ring the doorbell, and by the time the person that has less than two megabits is able to see the interaction, the UPS driver's leaving or on its way back to the car, back to the truck. Uh, the experience um, and the lag uh, creates a little bit of frustration. Um, and that's, that's some of the stuff we want to avoid um, because that is, you know, when I'm talking about enhancing your brand in the house, uh, when they don't have that, that is, um, you know, that's a hurdle to overcome if the experience isn't, you know, doesn't deliver on the experience that you see on the TV, um, that then could, um, you know, tarnish your brand and our brand as well, instead of enhancing it. Uh, so in some cases, Ring, um, with DSL, um, it's, I, don't, I hate to say this, but it just might not be an option. But if it's close, then you can understand, you know, kind of explain that to them as you as, as they've done the install. But that is because um, people still could get the live view, still take a look at stuff. Um, but some of the lag time uh, may um, may affect the quality experience. Perfect. And then going into the installation part of it, uh, when you're putting in a video doorbell uh, in in place of an existing doorbell, um, isn't one of the issues with the ring doorbell having enough power f through the existing doorbell wiring? Are you guys having issues with that? Yes, yeah, so we um, we include a pro power kit in the pro uh, to help with that. But for the ring video doorbell two, it between eight and 24 volts is needed uh, to be able to be hardwired solution and work effectively. Uh, with a, an existing electri electrical or mechanical doorbell. And then the Pro is 18, uh, 16 to 24 volts. And so inside the Pro, we include a Pro Power Kit to help with that piece of it. Again, Jamie Siminoff's big, um, you know, one of his big pushes is that, hey, he wants everything included in the box itself to make sure that you can do the install. And 
uh, one of the um, things that we've seen over time and why we include the Pro Power Kit is for that very reason, to match and be able to, um, to have a solution for the 16 to 24 volts uh, required for the Pro. And then getting into the motion lights, uh, when it's triggered, do you have the ability in the app for it to alert you? Yes. You can snooze it, but yes. So if there's a motion that sets off, yes, then you, um, inside the app itself, you can uh, set the motion detector uh, notification alerts off or on. And if it's on, you'll get notified if, um, if uh, it senses motion. And then you can have, in, depending on the solution you've chosen, the ring solution, you could have either adjustable or an enhanced customizable motion zone. And then the last question here is uh, back to the demo system. Uh, do you guys offer demo pricing uh, for, for dealers, installers? We don't, but that is something that uh, we are uh, we're looking at as we review maybe some of the ways we can be more successful in 2019 if there's an opportunity to have some demo pricing. Um, but uh, today uh, there is no demo pricing available, um, but I certainly would like to see it. I know when I was at Panamax uh, and Furman, we offered that and it was, and there's no better testimonial than having an integrator say, this is what I use. Let me show you mine, um, how I use it. Um, so today the answer is no. Um, but, uh, you know, we'll take a look at that to see if there's an opportunity for us to offer that in the future. And then, uh, with an installer account, uh, with that demo, are you guys looking at setting that up? So maybe they have that activated without tying it to monitor service for the demo features. Repeat that for me. <laughs> um, being able to, uh, you know, tie, use that and demo that, uh, system, you know, for what, what steps do they use to demo a system without having it tied into a monitoring service, I should say? Yeah, we wouldn't have that. That wouldn't be something that if we did have a demo program that we would uh, show that part of it. Um, that's something that you would have to uh, discuss. We would show you how the self-monitoring works in a demo system. Should we ever come up with a plan uh, and, a, and an offer for that? Uh, it would it would only be on the self monitoring, and you could show the three different modes. Uh, but I don't believe we would ever show the capability of uh, professional monitoring um, in any demo any demo mode. Perfect. Well, guys, uh, do you guys have any other questions? Again, thanks, Todd, for hopping on and taking time to answer everybody's questions. Um, if you, I understand how it works, as soon as we get off the phone, as soon as we uh, Stop this webinar, then the question starts rolling in. Uh, feel free to reach out to uh, your account manager at Capital, myself. I was gracious enough to give you all of his contact info as well. Um, so feel free to reach out to any of us. We're all here to help you guys out. Chris, thank you for the time. Uh, I absolutely believe Capital is one of the best distributors around the country, if not the best. They've got a great name, the effort they make for installers and integrators is a uh, world class uh, and uh, I can tell by the questions again um, that uh, the integrators on this call uh, are the one driving the business in this country and uh, I'm appreciative of the time you spent and uh, thanks for all the great questions and uh, let me know if I can help you um, and again I appreciate the time and effort you've made this morning thank you well and thank you Todd and uh, since I don't see any other questions coming in guys I'll we're gonna wrap up the webinar here and again, I want to say thanks a lot uh, for taking time out of your day to learn about uh, Ring products and some of the new cool stuff from Ring. And uh, if you guys have any questions, uh, we'd love to chat, uh, whether it's about Ring or anything else or just about your day. Feel free to reach out to us. Uh, and again, if you guys don't know, we do record all of these webinars. Uh, we will be posting them on our Capital Sales YouTube channel. So if you want to go back and look at that product or if you miss something, feel free to go back and look at that. Uh, and also, if you want the actual PowerPoint, reach out to your local account manager and we can email that to you as well. So again, guys, I want to thank you and I want to thank you, Todd, as well for taking time out of your day. Thank you. Well, you guys have a great day and I look forward to seeing you guys on the next webinar.